Hello and welcome to the Brompton Technology training series on AV over IP from the ground up. I'm Chris Dyson, CTO of Brompton Technology and one of the founding members of the company. And through this video series, I'm going to be introducing you to the fundamentals of AV over IP, all the bits that you really need to know if you're going to be working with AV over IP on an LED processor. Why are we talking about AV over IP? Well, Brompton's Generation 3 processors support AV over IP. And the reason that we've done that is that there is significant industry demand now for AV over IP, but unfortunately, there is quite a steep learning curve, and we are looking to ease the transition a little bit. In terms of industry perception of AV over IP, sometimes uh, it can be a little bit optimistic. It's going to solve all my EDID problems. And that may well be true, but at the same time, it's probably going to introduce some additional complexities as well that you need to be aware of. There is unfortunately quite a bit of misinformation out there, or at least perhaps incomplete information. So we're going to attempt to cover all of the fundamentals that you need to know. And the public resources that are out there are typically quite technical or alternatively very high level. Um, so they will talk about all the benefits of AV over IP and how it's going to change your life, but they won't necessarily tell you what it actually is. So we're trying to be somewhere in the middle, uh, a bit more of a practical guide to AV over IP. And the reason we need to do this is that AV over IP, it's about sending video, but it is different uh, to baseband video, like HDMI, DisplayPort, or SDI. Um, and as a result, there are definitely some new concepts that it's quite important to understand. So going into this, what do you already need to know? Well, simplistically, nothing, really. We're not assuming any previous knowledge. We are attempting to do this literally from the ground up. So as we go through, we're going to be building on each section of this presentation as we go to give you a full understanding of AV over IP. It's certainly helpful if you've got uh, some existing familiarity with video techniques, but the most important thing is that you have a desire to learn. And as long as you've got that, we should be fine. So what are we looking to achieve here? Well, we want to be able to describe the basics of AV over IP. Not necessarily all the technical detail, but all of the basics. We want to understand the motivation. Why are we talking about AV over IP? Why do we want to use it? We're going to try and maintain a balanced view as we do this. Um, we don't want to be uh, overly optimistic about the opportunities that AV over IP presents. There are plenty of opportunities, but at the same time, there are some caveats that we need to watch out for. So we want to get that balance right. We want to understand at least the basics of how AV is transferred over IP, and we want to have familiarity with how this actually looks in practice when you're setting up a system. We're also not trying to teach everybody to be an expert here, so we are going to have some reasonable limits in terms of how far we're going to go, and it's good to recognize what those limits are and know when realistically it's best to defer to someone else, um, go and ask a question. So, in terms of how we've constructed this course, we've broken it up into 10 uh, easy to consume bite-sized pieces. So we're starting with what is AV, which might seem like a fairly basic question, but it is important we understand the constituent elements of AV over IP before we put them all together. Similarly then, we are going to cover what is IP. We're then gonna talk about why we want to combine AV and IP why should we be putting them together? What are the benefits of doing that? But also, what are some of the things that we need to watch out for? We're then going to start to talk about how we send video data over IP. So this is now starting to get into the practical elements of how it actually works under the hood. We're not going to go into too much technical detail, but we are going to cover the basics again so that you have a clear understanding of how this is expected to work. Similarly, we need to talk about how we send timing data over IP. Um, that's perhaps equivalent to GenLock in a baseband world. We're then going to talk about how we connect senders and receivers together. How do we get them successfully communicating? And we're going to look, in the broader sense, at full 2110 systems and how we might manage them. Now, 2110, unfortunately, 
at times is perhaps not the easiest to work with. So we're going to look at some of the things that we can do to make it a little bit easier uh, to improve that user experience. We're then going to take a look at uh, the specifications for AV over IP on the SQ200, our flagship generation three processor. And we're then going to go through and wrap up by summarizing all the key points that we have covered. So each of these stages is intended to build on the previous ones. If possible, it's best to watch it through in order. All right, let's get started.